Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our Spark modifier tables we're going to be working with in our GM Gen 4 ECMs. So the modifier tables are going to be modifying the spark timing coming from our base or our main spark timing tables that we took a look at in our last video. They're going to be accounting for different kind of conditions, such as our air temp being really cold or really hot, or the engine coolant temp being really cold or hot. They're going to allow us to utilize a modifier at any given operation point so that we deliver the appropriate amount of spark timing to our engine. So without further wait, let's jump into the video so we can go through all of our spark modifier tables, then move into our VCM scanner and take a look at how we can expose those modifier tables and figure out exactly what's being applied at any given operation point. Okay, so let's get started here. We're gonna be taking a look at our spark timing modifier tables and our GM Gen 4 ECMs. So in the last video, we took a look at our base spark timing tables. We jump into our engine here. We can actually go back into those tables, go into general, idle, airflow, fuel, and to spark. These four tables represent where our base timing, our core timing is gonna be coming from that's gonna be delivered to the engine. So we'll find here we have these high and low octane tables. The high octane table is gonna be representing no knock activity. The low octane table will be representing high knock activity. So it's gonna be something that we have two different amounts of ignition timing values in here, and we're gonna be drastically reducing the spark timing from our high octane into our low octane, typically about eight to 10 degrees in the higher load ranges. So it's going to dampen out any kind of spark that's going on and take the stress or strain off of the short-term knock correction that's gonna be going on in the background. We're gonna be covering knock correction in some upcoming videos, so I don't wanna get kind of weighed down right now, but just kind of generalizing what's going on here and jumping into the table itself, we can see it's based on our spark air mass and it's gonna be based on our engine RPM. So the values in here are gonna be what we wanna see the engine run for spark timing. Now, just because we're commanding, let's say, a spark timing value, accumulation of all these tables here, just taking into account any kind of operation condition. Let's just say we're trying to deliver 30 degrees spark timing at a given engine RPM and a given air mass and load the engine's operating at. That doesn't mean that's gonna be what we actually get at the engine. It has to pass through these base correction tables. These tables are gonna be counting for conditions that these base tables are not, such as our engine coolant temperature or the air temp or the air density that's going on outside. Or if we have to worry about the, the engine warming up, it's not going to be able to account for that in our base table. The base table is simply just going to be providing the amount of timing in a perfect condition. So the air temperature is going to be perfect, the engine coolant temperature would be perfect, and it's not gonna have any kind of uh, startup conditions going on. So it would be operating in a nice steady state condition or in full throttle conditions. These tables would represent what we want our ideal spark time to be at in those conditions. So anything above and beyond that as the engine's running and operating, we'll find that it could be cold, it could be hot, and that's the purpose of